Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I'm your host, I'm the end here, Krista Porter here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics of interest to libraries. Um, we broadcast the show live at um, every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. But if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show and it's posted to our website every week. So you can get all of our archives there. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can get the archives and see today's um, recording later. Um, so if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's where you'll go. Encompass Live is for libraries of all types. Um, here at the Nebraska Library Commission, for those of you who are not <coughs> excuse me, live, uh, Nebraska people. Um, we are the state agency for libraries. So we do training and consulting and grants for any type of library in the state. Um, and so uh, public, academic, K-12 schools, uh, correctional, museums, special libraries, yes. Well, that covers the, um, those kinds. Of um, so anything like that is um, what we do here. So you will find anything like that on the show. <clears throat> we do a mixture of things here, book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products. Um, the only criteria for our show is that it is something to do with libraries. Something libraries are doing, something we think they should be or could be doing. Um, cool uh, resources or products or services we think they could be interested in. We do bring in guest speakers uh, on, to, to, on the show from um, both Nebraska and outside the state, but we also have Nebraska Library Commission staff that do presentations for us sometimes, and that's what we have today. Everyone here is NLC staff. Um, they're all part of a group, uh, a subgroup of NLC staff who do a uh, Friday Reads blog post on our blog. That's why I asked them to do this. Um, so every Friday, one staff person here posts about a book they like or a book they've read or they are reading, um, a little review of it. Um, and today, though, we're going to talk about some books we possibly read, some we haven't. Um, this is an idea, this is, today we're going to talk about a potentially controversial topic. <laughs> Stuff that people may have strong opinions on. And we definitely like to hear yours. If you have any opinions as we go through this, type them in. Um, books versus movies, the ultimate showdown. Which is better? Is the book always better than the movie? Can the movie be better than the book? Do you watch, you know, do you hate all the movies and just want to read the books? I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> um, so um, I'm just going to have everyone here just introduce themselves briefly, just the, um, who you are, where you, what you, you know, your title, what you do here for commission, and um, yeah, we'll just start with that. I was going to have you say, what, you, what is your uh, thesis on this, but I don't know if it's that good or not. I'm, I'll tell you, first, I'm the Library Development Director here at the Nebraska Library Commission, and I don't think there's a one or the other. I don't think one is always better than the other. I think it can vary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it I got more to say. We'll get into it. So, uh, I'm Linda. I do the interlibrary loan lending for the commission. I do the interlibrary loan borrowing for school, rural, and uh, special libraries that don't do their own mm -hmm. ILO borrowing and for state agencies as well. And what I think is interesting about books versus movies and storytelling is just the the different ways um, stories can be told in print and visually. Mm -hmm. I think that's an interesting thing to consider. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm Amanda Sweet, the Technology Innovation Librarian. Um, I do a little of this and that, but mostly I just get tech done. <laughs> <laughs> and my take on books versus movies is that sometimes they're good, sometimes they're awesome, but mainly I love it when movies are just so bad they're good. <laughs> <laughs> that is a thing, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I enjoy that. <laughs> it's okay to enjoy those. <laughs> Um, I'm Allison, and I'm the cataloger, so I do all the cataloging of all the state publications that are produced that we have here, and I also teach cataloging classes and answer any questions anyone might have about cataloging. Um, and as far as movies versus books, 
Um, it kind of depends. Sometimes the movie is, you know, better than the book, and sometimes uh, so. <laughs> I'm Amy Owen. I'm an information services librarian, which means I answer questions to a lot of mm -hmm. reference. Um, I also spend a lot of time looking for book face worthy covers mm -hmm. for That's our book face Friday nice. series. And so. you manage the uh, and you manage the Friday reads. read schedule. I keep everyone posting. So don't let the last week so I fail. Oh, <laughs> it's oh. Um, yeah. But, um, yeah, I think that you know it just depends on the book of the movie. But um, I like to be lazy sometimes and watch the movie first, so I don't have to imagine the characters on my own. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so that's what can argue with it with my kids. I'm like, because <laughs> somebody else is already doing it. Yeah, yeah, right on the I'm Sam Shaw. I'm the um, Planning and Data Services Coordinator here at the Commission and the LSTA Coordinator, which means um, I collect data as part of the public library survey, we publish our data. Um, LSTA involves planning documents and the federal programs that we've administered. Mm -hmm. As far as book versus movies, I tend to gravitate towards movies because of time. <laughs> That's a thing too, yes. Um, right now, but there, but there are many examples I think of movies that do the book justice and the important thing is that without the book we wouldn't have a lot of the movies. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And also I was going to mention, I believe this book just told me that it's your birthday today too. It is also my birthday today. Yes. <laughs> Happy birthday. Thank you. All right so um, it looks like we all have pretty, pretty good open minds about this which is good that it's just you know it is what it is. Um, now, Amy, you mentioned not reading the book first, um, watching the movie first. And you, you know, do you think that makes it easier that you don't have to worry about when you're watching the movie? Oh, but what about this part? What about that part? Definitely. I think I'm yeah. less disappointed if I've watched mm -hmm. the movie first versus reading it first because then I'm not expecting certain things to happen. And when they don't happen, yeah, you know, when they don't have all set. So, yeah, and then the book itself is an expanded version of that movie. And you're getting more. So that's what I was going to ask. Now, well, what if then you read the book and you're like, hey, they didn't explain that in the movie. What? That's a good way of thinking about it. Yeah, it's an expanded version of it. Yeah. And a lot of the things that have become movies lately or recently. Um, less than 15 years. I read a lot of these books a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know what some people, some people can remember specific little bitty things in books and know the entire thing. I know if I read this book when I was in high school, I, I loved it. I thought it was great, but I won't be able to tell you that they didn't put this guy in the movie. Oh my yeah. gosh, I can't believe it. No, I, I won't be able, unless I read it like this year. So. Yeah. Although this book you read in childhood, sometimes you can have a really deep emotional connection of yes. that book and feel very protective of it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes then you might not give the movie a chance. Yeah, that's a problem too. I, I remember that like Little House on the Prairie. You know, I read oh, the books yeah. when I was like eight, oh, nine yeah. years old, and my mom went and read it. I think like there was a movie, a TV movie or something, and I'm yeah. like. No, this is nothing like the book. No, no, I, I can't do this. I remember no. the TV show. Yeah. Like, Are you making me mad? Because Pa looked like he walked out of like a 70s series. <laughs> 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 he just looked quite look right. And so, you know, a, lot of time, a lot of TV shows and movies made in the past less cared less about authenticity I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think more recently they do care about making it more authentic. I mean you had people in something like that where well right. we don't care that they didn't wear their hair that way. He's wearing a shag cut that, that was right probably yeah. at that time like, in real time. Dr. Shivago. Like yeah. the, they they look fantastic mm -hmm. in that movie but they don't look like they were in the Russian Revolution. No, they really shut at all. Or they they look great. So I mean, it's a fun <laughs> movie to watch. And have access to so many tools too. I mean, think That's about true. Game of Thrones and what their budget is. And yeah. The yeah. Yeah. You know, or another HBO series, um, Little Big Lies or Big Little Lies. Right. Big Lies. Yeah. I mean, the budget that they have for for um, the things that they can do are a lot more than the House of the Prairie. Yeah. So we do have some slides here, some books that we had um, thrown around to talk about. So um, let's see what we have here. So Harry Potter, obviously, huge, 
more movies than books. <laughs> yeah. um, for myself, and, and I will, I'm going to out myself and possibly uh, bother some people as, that I am a librarian. I've never read any of the Harry Potter books. Okay. Really? Neither have I. Yay! Neither have I. All right. <laughs> but I've seen all the movies. What is wrong with the people? people? <laughs> <laughs> I told you this is going to get famous here. I, I, I'm going to try to be nice. I, when it first came out, I was like, oh. Wait, wait, what is it about? It's about some wizards and magic. Oh, I and this is going to sound very pretentious. I read that when it was Lord of the Rings. I don't need to read it again. And I don't need to read this whatever story. <laughs> 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 when the very first book came out, I was like, oh, whatever, I'm not reading that. And to be fair, the, the very first book of Harry Potter really isn't that great. Right. And when it first mm -hmm. came out and there's just one book, that's what I'm talking yeah. about. Way back when the very first book came out, everyone went crazy for it. Yeah. I was like, I've read that story, that yeah. story about wizards and magic before, and I'm not impressed. Um, and it's great. I love that kids are reading and going crazy for reading and this book. It really brought a lot of kids to the home yeah. yeah. that's so sad and they don't care, and that's awesome. But it's not for me, and I'm not gonna. And that was just it. And but then all the movies have come out, and um, most just recently, when all the movies were. Well, they moved now. They were on um, HBO about all of them, and said we're playing every single one. Mm -hmm. um, my husband and I sat down, and it took us a few weeks <laughs> um, to watch all of them in order, beginning to end. So I've seen all of the movies, and, stuff. and I thought they were great. They're great movies. Yeah. I don't know how it compares to the books. I do know that he was a little perturbed about certain things that were different or wrong in it. Um, but he seemed to enjoy both anyways. Yeah, there's only so much of the book that you can fit into a movie exactly. without it being yeah. 10 hours long. True. So I kind of gave him a pass on some of it. And, and some of it, you can't re recreate, no matter how great the technology is. There's just yeah. some things that aren't going to translate well to film, I think. And mm -hmm. Especially when, I don't know, when did the first Harry Potter movie came out, so... 2001. Yeah. But then we have things like Lord of the Rings, which came out more recently, and can do more with the um, special effects and whatnot. There's technology moving along. Now, this one, Lord of the Rings, I did read all those way back when. Middle school, I don't know. And The Hobbit, read all of those. Um, my mom was big into Lord of the Rings, so we had all of their books, all of his books. Are you surprised by how many movies they don't have in the book? <laughs> <laughs> I was. Uh, well, I um, <clears throat> I think all of these could have been one movie, one book, and it just makes sense because all of them were up until the end. And I think I don't know Harry Potter set the precedent of, but the last one we're going to break it up and make it even yeah. longer. And I don't. Only thing I can think of is they want to suck more money at it because all the other ones fit into one movie. Why does the last one have to be two? Why does the last one have to be two? Um, Hunger Games. Why does the last one have to be two yeah. when all the other ones all fit into one? You're blatantly just saying, we're going to make you guys pay us more money. And it's really offensive, I find. I think especially when it's a trilogy like the Hunger yes. Games was. It's, it's already a I mean, there's yeah. something yeah. about three's it magic fits so nicely. Or something. Yes. Yeah. The Hobbit, ugh. I love the Hobbit book. I like the movies. They were, it was just way too long. The Hobbit's a small book, and it's a really good story, and it's enough for a movie, maybe two. And you already have the animated version. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's that. Um, I was just like, this is drama. Too long. The Lord of the Rings, I thought it'd be okay. Those are two big, fat books. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The Hobbit, I'm just like, really? They're still <laughs> chatting at his house. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't left yet. Come on. Oh, my God. This is a much more exciting book, honestly. It's not on yeah. like this. It's yeah. Pack up your bag and some gum. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I did enjoy it at the end, but it was just like uh, me having gotten like, uh, where's Mom and you, where is he? Get him in this movie already. <laughs> no, I don't know. Um, another one along the same lines: Game of Thrones. Huge set of books. Huge TV series still going. And. The TV series is ahead of the books. 
Yes, they which is good for like beyond. I don't know many other cases of that happening or any other cases of that happening. So I don't know how he's going to write the next book or like <laughs> what, what if he changes things. Hasn't it been delayed? delayed like the yeah. final oh, book yeah. in the series or something? It's yeah. Yeah. waiting so, to see how the show ends up. I think, that, <laughs> I think that what you described, George R. R. Martin described, was that they gave him this truckload of cash. Yeah. <laughs> and he said, said okay. here's the general story. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so they're kind of going so they kind of know his, 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 license with they kind of his outline. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So that's one that, yeah, it, it's not, the series is, the books itself don't have an end yet, because it's still writing. The series is still going. Um, Walking Dead is the same thing. The comic is still going. The TV show is still going. And it's very interesting how you, Mm -hmm. Dexter too. Yeah. yeah. Um, I actually, for Dexter, I like both the book and the movie. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned Dexter because I've never seen Game of Thrones. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know? yeah. Well, I didn't even know there were. Well, I didn't know that there were Dexter books, but I've not read them. But I love mm -hmm. the series. The TV shows, all that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I have a bone to pick with the way they ended the TV show. Like, yeah, for those who have never seen it. it wasn't so yeah. <laughs> no spoilers for <we're> trying. <laughs> <laughs> the things that have been written and out for a long time, we will be talking about certain things. But yeah, we will give you a little bit. Um, so it's, it's, I find it too often giving them a pass. I like sometimes, it doesn't bother me when they bring in new things into somebody's TV shows if or the or the movies because it, it if it doesn't totally screw up the story or make me think of this is not even at all what was meant, I'm willing to. I'm, I think I'm pretty open minded. I was telling people earlier, I and mean, Alice yeah. earlier, I was trying to figure out because the whole point, one you know, of the main point of the show is is the book better than the movie? What books were really good and the movie following up was horrible and you were so offended and upset about it? Um, and the other way around, you know, the book is yeah. okay, or they book And I was trying to find, think of books I'd read and then when I, the movie or the TV show, I was so upset that it was done completely wrong and I'm just mad at everyone. And I couldn't think of anything that I was that <laughs> upset about. And I guess I'm just too easy that I just like, it wasn't horrible, but so it was okay. I wasn't. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, that could be. I mean, one that I, that I do, I mean, Anne Rice, Queen of the Damned, people have a lot of trouble with that. And wasn't in the costume. And, yeah. But I also, no. 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 He's interviewing the, with the vampire. Oh, he read the other first one. And that's the thing. It wasn't at all the book. So it's you have to explain it. Yes. Yeah. Like yeah. iRobot, the, the new iRobot movie, you know, which one with, um, was that the one with Will Smith? Yes. No, I don't Don't, don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> There's robots. That's about the relationship. <laughs> the book and the movie. Um, but it was a good movie. If you can just say, don't look at the book, it's okay. Um, and they do stand along separately. And that's all right. It's, I don't think, and I guess that's just, I don't think it's horrible if they totally didn't follow the movie, if they came out with a good movie. Or, I can understand why they adapted the book the way they did, why they made the changes. Like it just narratively it doesn't work, or right, you know, there's a lot of yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and then yeah, you can't get on screen without narration. Yeah, yeah, yeah I can understand really why, why, but yeah. there's some things like Under the Dome. I'm not a huge Stephen King fan, mm -hmm. and I've, but I've read some of his books, the ones that are kind of less horror-ish. Mm -hmm. And then I watched the TV show, and I'm like, no, this is not how I visualize things. No, this doesn't happen. No, I'm just not watching this anymore. This is just not for me. And that's just that's just me. It doesn't happen every time, but mm -hmm. there are times where I'm just like, I can't deal with this. No. That's when I never read Under the Dome. The the yeah, but I saw the show when it was coming out, and I was like, that's a cool premise. That's really interesting. Oh, and it's Stephen King. Cool. So I thought the show was really fun and bizarre and everything, but I didn't know that it wasn't like what was in the book. So it didn't. Yeah, they did. I was able to enjoy it as a crazy, maybe sci fi fantasy. Is it horror? I don't know. Yeah. It's Stephen King, but it isn't always right horror. So where's this thing going? Kind of, yeah. It's like, and it was awesome. 
But they didn't put the psychedelic turtle in the movie. Which one? In. Which it? There's been two hits. <laughs> um, either the old one or the new one. <laughs> either. <laughs> either. <laughs> the yeah. But there's, was, yeah, there's things they have to, you know. It was kind of cool that in the original It movies, they took the movie from like an adult perspective, kind of going back to when they were kids. Mm -hmm. And in the remake of It, they started with them as kids. And yeah. They kind of, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the, the second part is coming out later. Right. With uh, Bill, Bill Hader, too. Yeah. It's great. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So something a little older than we're talking about recent ones. Apocalypse Now and Heart of Darkness. I don't remember if I ever read Heart of Darkness. I know I haven't read Heart of Darkness. Maybe Darkness. Cool. I heard too. I think the film doesn't follow it very closely. I yeah. mean, yeah. it's kind of one of those in space things. You know? Right, because I did, as doing the research for getting this stuff together, it's not even, it's not Vietnam, the book. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. before it's a book, because when it was written, was needed it's something right. completely different. So, what is it? Because this is one that you had mentioned. Yeah, what's I think good or bad one, about the way? One thing that you know, like you said, the disclosure is it's loosely based on the book. But mm -hmm. for me, the movie was much better than the book. Ah, okay. <laughs> and I think that those, you know, we're talking about thematic elements like you know, uh, what was the direct was Coppola. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Translated, you know, the the war scene so well to film mm -hmm. visually that. Um, you know, and I think most people would say would 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 not recognize Heart of Darkness, but they would definitely recognize Apocalypse Now. Oh, so, yeah. You know, I'm sure a lot of people realize. Yeah. There's many movies, I think, because there's so many. You know, like you said, if we didn't have some of these books, we wouldn't even have the movies. Um, and I'm sure a lot of people don't realize that some of these came from books, certain movies coming out now. Sure. I'm like, Shakespeare did that. Tell yeah. me about you. Right. Yeah. That you don't realize, oh, it's actually based on. Yeah, Tandy Clueless. Yeah. Yeah. Emma. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Good times. <laughs> 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 so, The Godfather, here's another one. I have not read the books, but I've seen all the movies, which are. Again, Marlon Brando. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> oh, well, I'll, I'll just say that I think with The Godfather, the first movie in the trilogy, three movies, was based upon The Godfather book, but there were no second or third books. Everything um, after that was... Mario Puzo worked with, worked with Coppola again mm -hmm. and said, I'm going to write the screenplay for the second and third, and then subsequent books came out. Like based on movies. Yeah, the and, other and, way. and I think yeah. that's the same thing. I, 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 I really like the, I mentioned earlier, the Little Big Lies, the HBO mm -hmm. thing. Um, and it, so I'm reading the book right now, and I think that's the same situation. They didn't intend for season two. Yeah. But um, now the author is working with HBO to write screenplays for season two based upon the characters that she wrote in the book that appeared in season one. So. And that's really interesting based on the popularity of the film. Yeah. But, but and good. also the relationship with the film and and the, and the writer, which sometimes is not always good. Right. There are a lot of these, like you're saying, except you were saying earlier, Stephen King hates all of the movies that have been made of his most, most of them. Right. And he's just involved in Under the Dome. Yeah, okay. Um, that's the only one I can think of off the top of my head that I think he was involved in directly. He was involved in Rose Red, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And. Um, that one that I can't remember the title of right now. <laughs> I don't know. It'll come to me in about like 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Blurt it out. Yeah. There's probably, there's probably a few examples of movies I think that you thought did his books justice, but mm -hmm. more often than not, you did not like it. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe the authors need to make sure they are stay more involved in their productions. But although you said, even though he was involved under the dome, don't think that it matched up any I just, yeah. for some reason, didn't, yeah. Yeah, like they just kind of introduced all these new elements and mm -hmm. I just was like, whoa, hey, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. And, and like I said, I, I'm pretty sure he was involved in production mm -hmm. of Under the Dome, but I could be wrong. It was, mm -hmm. yeah. I know at one point he changed his contract so he could be more involved in the movies. Yeah, but I don't know oh, at what point he did that. Mm -hmm. Ah, now something a little different. Jane Austen. 
many things, many uh, adaptations have been done of many of her books. Um, but this is a case of one, and we've got here, that there's been multiple versions of it. Um, the um, BBC one, that's the one that is, you know, recently people are um, you know, really in love with many people. And then there's the more recent, the newer one, um, Kira Knightley in it. Which one, I don't know. Um, they seem, I don't know how different each of the, sometimes I want, this is something I think about is each new production, is it much different from the previous one? Adaptation? Was that the BBC a miniseries? Yes, it was. it was. And it's much more faithful to the book mm -hmm. than the 2005 production was. And because also, it had more time. Yeah, it had more time. And, yeah. and also, I remember, and I read this, this might have been something Kira Knightley said about Pride and Prejudice when she was involved, was she felt like the original BBC was more kind of like an adult version, like kind of almost a more idealized um, version of you know what life was like during Regency England in the early 19th century. Mm -hmm. um, whereas during her Pride and Prejudice, it was more, you know, she felt like it was kind of, I think she used the word teenager a little bit, not in a kind of a derogatory sort of way, but just mm -hmm. kind of the overall mood a little bit. Um, I know the 2005 is kind of regarded as, I think, I think I heard, read somewhere, I'm a huge Jane Austen fan, mm -hmm. and Pride and Prejudice is my favorite book, so. <laughs> um, that, you know, kind of Pride and the 2005 was kind of more the, the artsier version in some ways, mm -hmm. and they did deviate. There is one scene oh. in particular um, where um, Darcy declares his love, and in the in the book and the um, the, the BBC production, um, it actually happens um, in a house, whereas in the 2005, it's like actually it's like gazebo. it's a gazebo and it's pouring rain. Yeah. And Darcy is so dead. Yeah. So he's still my baby. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I get that would be like yeah, a teen angst say, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When in the real the book in the original it's like, yeah, it's just in the house. Yeah, in the house, no big deal. <laughs> yeah. And it's uh, they made it more dramatic. They did. And I think this is this is one case where I think both have their strengths. You know, I, I like well really all three, the book and the two movies, and I like all of them. Mm -hmm. It's it's probably one not just one, but kind mm -hmm. of, you know, an example of where, you know, they, they did improve upon the book in some ways, and that, you know, they had really great source material to draw from to begin with, and there's just, there's some things that, you, you know, you can't do in the movies that, you know, Jane Austen did in her books. So. Mm -hmm. Does Helen, did, like, the Darcy character actually dive into the pond in the book? I don't, because I don't think he I don't think he actually <laughs> does, <laughs> or I think like I'm glad Colin Firth did. So maybe for Sam, but <laughs> I mean, I think you know it talks in the book. You know, it talks about him being like kind of hot and sweaty from riding on his horse all day. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't think you know he actually you Had know to cool off in the time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So also we have Sense and Sensibility, another Jane Austen one. Now how did this one do? Um, I think, you know, again, it was another really good adaptation. Um, Emma Thompson wrote the adaptation and won an Oscar for it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously some things changed. Uh, but again, I felt like, like with Pride and Prejudice, she was very faithful to the overall story, the overall mm -hmm. narrative, um, to what Jane Austen intended. And that's the thing. That's the thing too. It's. Do you think it's harder because we can't actually ask Jane? So like we can ask Stephen King, come and you know help us make this <laughs> thing that you want it to be. Um, and that's and interesting. Yeah. I don't. I don't even know what Jane Austen would even think about us turning her books into movies. I think yeah. she'd probably be surprised that two hundred years later. We're still reading her still, book. Yeah. We're thrilled. Yeah, and, and yeah. And and with Sense and Sensibility, when she originally wrote it, I think it started out as like a series of letters between the two sisters. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of explains some of the overall like narrative structure of the book a little bit. But I, I think she'd be really happy with what we're doing in her books that we 
you know, Hollywood and the BBC, they try to be very faithful yeah. and, you know, and capture because Jane Austen is so beloved and kind of like with Harry Potter, it, mm -hmm. it's a very kind of divisive issue among Austen mm -hmm. fans. And, or except when you get to it, I didn't put it on here, you know, Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I read the book. I never saw the movie. <laughs> it's it's definitely a strong woman movie in in what it went. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how much uh, Jane Austen. -y. <laughs> Sense and sensibility and sea monsters. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. You got to In those cases, you just kind of let go. Let go of the source material and enjoy the crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I was, oh, we were talking about Stephen King. We didn't even mention him in Shelley. Yeah. Um, There is so, so much to say about this. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's they're completely different. Yeah. They're completely different stories. Um, this is definitely one I can think of seeing Stephen King say about the movie. No. no. It, it made him it made him angry. No, no. Um that <laughs> evil horror. That's the one I was evil horror. <laughs> 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 yeah, about twenty years later. <laughs> They did into a miniseries. He was involved in that. And so if you actually go just to the Stanley Hotel, they have um, all these pictures of that production and how he was involved in that production mm -hmm. and how he was unhappy with the fantastic Cooper. Cuba version. Did the original was the original movie, the original movie this one here? Was it filmed at the Stanley Hotel? Or just was, or both of them were? No, it wasn't filmed there. It wasn't filmed there. there. No, because um, the Cuber couldn't fly. He wouldn't get on a plane, and uh -huh. so they could. They had to do things in areas where he, that he could get to that weren't by a plane. Um, and the really dramatic opening footage is actually shot in Montana. Oh, um, I'm from Montana. The, so. the, 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 the beautiful, uh, the beautiful the the scenes. scenes. Yeah. Yes. Um, and so, yeah, in the in the movie, there's only one or two things that actually one thing. I'm not going to give anything away um, that make you think for sure this has to be something supernatural. Whereas in the book, it's definitely something supernatural going on. Mm -hmm. But in in the movie, you can pretty much explain a lot of things away with. Um, uh, an unreliable narrator and they're just crazy. The mental illness. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's another one where, like, I think the, 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 the shining is use. more into a, a horror, horror of mental illness. Movie, yes. Not yeah. a horror of supernatural. Right. And it's, it's so funny. probably why I didn't enjoy it as much because I, I think it was supernatural. Horror, horror, but that's just not my thing. It's funny too that this that he writes a book about writer's block. Like Stephen King who produces so much work. <laughs> <laughs> like it was Maybe it's a, he's so compulsive here. that he has to like write books under other names so that he doesn't flood the market with his own um, work. Um, and then he wrote on writing. Yeah. 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 Maybe that's his, his big fear. Yeah. His, the, that's his, his horror fear. would be I'm not writers are like. Yeah. But the Shining also makes really good use of sounds, like with the typewriter and mm -hmm. with him playing ball in the um, mm -hmm. in the hotel, the bouncing ball, and that's the use of sound in the movie is something that you can't really get across in text. Mm -hmm. Not as well, no. Yeah, so that's something they could make the movie be better. And Rowan Poe did a lot of that. The movie adaptations for him. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The self help art. Yeah. 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 And quote the Raven. The Simpsons did a pretty good version of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I love Halloween because that comes off. Yeah. 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 See, there are some meditations that are not these classic movies, yeah, there's their cartoon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, more recent ones Ready Player One. Um, is that this year that movie came out last year? Yeah, I think 
yeah, it, it just came out on DVD recently, so if you didn't see it in the theater. I reviewed this book for uh, Friday Reads, and it came out in 2011. Right, it came out. So it was a while ago, but I had only recently picked it up mm -hmm. this past year or so. And I really enjoyed the book. And I really enjoyed the movie, but they, they were very, very different. Mm -hmm. Just again, because there's only so much you can fit into a movie, and then some things just didn't work for the screen. But mm -hmm. the effects were amazing in the movie. The yes. visuals were great. I read the I got the book when it first came out because it just sent us something that was just for me. Yeah. It, it all of the um the eighties references yeah, from as a child culture. and yeah. the pop culture and the the D and D in there. It was just I loved it and I read it and I loved it to death. I thought it was awesome before it was even thought of being coming to me. Um, and then when the movie was being done, it, and there's all this questioning about, well, but they're not doing it this way. No, I don't know. I'm going to have to see. And it is so different. It's not at all. And you're talking about watching the movie before seeing the book, yeah. or watching the movie before reading the book. It was not at all like what I had pictured in my head from reading the book. So many of the scenes, I had trouble matching them up with what I remembered from the book. And this goes along with, I read the book yeah. recently, not 20 years ago or whenever I was in high school. Um, and I had a really, I'm like, well, where's the scene? And so I had to go back and think about it again and, and then kind of rethink, oh, that must have been this thing. Well, I was picturing that being completely different yeah. than that. So it's kind of like it needs a, it needs a rewatch, I think, for me yeah. to try and match up the things that I just didn't. The movie I saw was not the book I read yeah, yeah, to me. Sure. Um, it had a lot of cool pop culture references. Some were missing for me, I think. There's a lot of things that I was looking forward to, and this is one of those cases that I didn't see. But then in the end, I really liked the movie as what it was. So I guess I do have some that I, I don't agree that the book was the movie. Not that it was the book was better, but the movie wasn't faithful to the book, mm -hmm. which is different. Yeah. And the description of the main character, too. Yeah. Because in the book, he was more of a husky gentleman. Oh, yes. <laughs> And in the movie, it was like that. He is. He's not. Not a husband. I kind of wonder about this one because the book is not as old. So no. this is not one that Steven Spielberg. He's the director, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is not one that he read as a child, like Emma Thompson with Jane yeah. Austen, and, and mm -hmm. so he didn't grow up thinking about how he was going to make this into a movie and he probably got attached to the project after it was already going well, because and because the book is a tribute to him and george lucas so i mean oh, totally. it's all that's you know it's true referring back to them yeah they felt like he had to be the one who did it <laughs> <laughs> absolutely no, that's fine um another recent one and this is one that actually is I came up with the idea for the show and right at the same time as Linda was posting a Friday reads about sharp objects. About sharp objects. This is another one where the use of sound is really interesting in the show and which they couldn't do in the book. There's a lot of roller skating in the show. Mm -hmm. And if I had read the book first, I would have probably wondered where the heck roller skating came from. But <laughs> it kind of makes sense because um the, the way it sounds is really interesting. The way it makes the characters move visually around the other characters mm -hmm. is really interesting. Um, and it helps further the narrative in a way that it would, would have been kind of silly to have in the text because it wouldn't have had the same effect. Mm -hmm. um, the performances are fantastic in the show as well. Um, I started reading the book after I started watching the TV show. Um, I started watching the TV show because of who was in it. I thought Patricia Clarkson was amazing. Mm -hmm. And um, I really like Amy Adams. The, <clears throat> oh, I'm not remembering her name, but the, the woman who plays the younger sister is fantastic. And it's the first time I've seen her in anything. Mm -hmm. um, but I know I have friends who are big fans of the book that did not like the show at all mm -hmm. um, because they had a, a strong connection, an emotional connection with the main character. And the director did do a lot of 
took a lot of liberties. The mm -hmm. the show, there's one whole episode about Calhoun days. It's not on the book at all. Mm -hmm. And um, but it was a really important episode, and it was a really visually interesting episode, and helped us understand the characters more. Mm -hmm. um, I recommend them both, but they're very they're very different. So you mentioned watching the show first and then reading the book, and maybe you talk about that, and I'm sure others have done that. Has there ever been a movie you've seen that you know is a book of, but you've not wanted to go back and read the book after the fact? Let's say, I either I love, I mean, it could be for various reasons. I don't know. Princess Bride. I've heard yeah. horrible things about the book. I have a copy of that on my shelf. Yes. And I was going to read it, but I so love that movie. It's such a, like, nostalgic. That's mm -hmm. my childhood right there. But I saw yeah. the movie and then read the book. Yeah. And I can understand why they adapted the book, or, yeah, adapted the book to the movie the way they did. Mm -hmm. Because the way it's originally written, it just, it doesn't, it, it wouldn't work as a movie. It yeah. just, mm -hmm. But someone that would rock on her had the idea. I can make this fun. I can make yeah. this a thing. Yeah. And it really does hold true to the intent of the book because in the book, I think I can say this without giving too much away. So the author of the book, he's recounting how he loved, he heard the story of the Princess Bride as a child. And he's like, I love this book. This was great. And so he goes and he buy, he finds the original book mm -hmm. and he's reading it to his kid. And his kid is like, this is horrible. I don't I don't get what's going on here. There's all this like well, yes, yeah, so that, but there's all this history about these, you know. And so the author is thinking, oh, my dad told me the edited version. <laughs> That's the thing. The the book actually the subtitle, if you look, is it's the good parts version. Yeah. <laughs> so there is this book, The Princess Bride, which is something completely different. It's like the book within the book. Kind yeah, of yeah. Different from what the actual Princess Bride book is that you will read because he's, yeah, he's yeah. just oh, it's the good parts version. And then yeah. that's what the movie is, is also. And so, yeah, the movie yeah. is very faithful in that respect to the book and trying to capture the good parts. Right. And they don't really address that as blatantly as it is in the book, um, except for where, you know, the grandfather is saying, I'll, you know, I'll leave out the kissing parts. But then, you know, to, towards the end, it's okay. You can go ahead. <laughs> I guess it's all right. Then it's really cool. And so, yeah. I don't know if that kid reaches puberty through the whole reading of the book, but, you know, <laughs> he becomes okay. So, yeah, it is interesting that, the, you know, that's what that was interesting. We were talking about reading or anything that you just didn't want to. Sideways for me. Yeah, that's when that's, yeah, we do have that here, yeah. Love the movie. Mm -hmm. I love there are some books. I didn't know it was a book till now. <laughs> Did you ever even go back and read it or no, the book? No. I haven't checked out. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to, it's all right. And hey, look, that's what's next. <laughs> okay, yeah. So. Yeah, like I said, I love the movie and I have no desire to go back and read the book. It's like, why bother? But maybe I will someday. I don't know if this is one, this is another one, and I only know this from looking, trying to find these book covers and whatnot. It's been pretty difficult. I was trying to find original, like the first editions of a lot of these books, because of, of course, after a movie became big, there's new versions of the book that were published and wanting it based on the movie or whatever. And this one, it was really difficult because the book and the movie came out in the same exact year. Wow. Yeah. And then there is actually a there's a two sequels to the book, self-published by the author. Which is very weird and interesting. I don't under you know why it, it yeah. That is interesting. Yeah, it's sideways. So the sequel is called Vertical. So it's sideways mm -hmm. Vertical. And then there's a third one that has something to do with wine. They, they, I don't know. That reminds me of another one, actually. The TV show The Leftovers. Uh -huh. I really liked that a lot. And then I went to go, um, I heard it was uh, based on a book of Tom Perona. Have, have you read it? I, I really like the series. I went back to read the books, and I think I read the first one. I was like, <laughs> I, I started. To, I, I picked up the book I and I leafed through it, and I was like, "This is not matching yeah. up with what the images I have in my head." Mm -hmm. And I like the show so much that yeah. I put the book back on the shelf. Yes, yeah, same, same, same thing. It's okay not to keep going with the book if you don't like it. Don't waste yeah. your. You have There's time. too many books out there. Like, you got a limited lifetime. <laughs> 
Now, here's a couple that Sam mentioned that are. Uh, yeah, I mentioned two words. More, yeah. <laughs> uh, the first one that I thought was really good ad adaptation was the Band of Brothers. That's, yeah, that's what we have here. Yeah. Um, really like the book, really like the series. The second one was Unbroken, which I love the book. Mm -hmm. Hated it. And I don't know if it's just because the book delves so much into this aloneness of mm -hmm. him and what he went through personally over many, a long period of time. You really can't cram that into a short movie. So mm -hmm. when I saw the movie, it's like I didn't really have those same feelings that I did when I read the book. Um, or maybe it was just adaptation. Maybe it was just I wasn't in line with Angelina and Jolene. So. <laughs> but I didn't feel that empath empathy that I felt for him when I read the book when I saw the movie. So I think that if I just saw the movie without reading the book, I would have been, I would have really had a really hard time, you know, um, having an empathy for him and what he went through. So it's interesting then that the the empathy you felt for reading the book didn't come along with you already when you watched the movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like there, you can a movie can be so I don't know badly is the right word, but done that even though you already had that feeling, so you went into the movie thinking, oh, I'm going to be really this is going to be a heart wrenching, and that didn't carry through. That the movie can completely break you from that preconceived and say, ah, oh, no. That was my experience. I don't know if other people yeah. had that same experience or not. I actually watched the movie first and then I read the book and I think I liked it more in that order. Because <laughs> I think that I think you're right that if I had actually read the book first, then the movie would have been it for me. But um, it's one of those to each their own. And that was like for me was saying that it the the book was like an extension of an expanded version of yeah. the movie. Yeah. That it got me more of the background, more of the what the movie was just starting to get into. Like the movie felt unfinished to me, which mm -hmm. is why I went to the book. Because I was like, I feel like there's a good story here, but it's missing some stuff. Mm -hmm. And there were some really powerful scenes in the movie itself. And then the book just kind of cleared up some of the answers for me. What about Band of Brothers then? You said that one, that one. And I know a lot of people say Well, this. I'm, a, I'm a huge Damian Lewis fan. Mm -hmm. and a lot of the work that he's done. Um, and I think that just for me, it's just, well, I think that Stephen Ambrose was involved with the Band of Brothers project too, which probably helped. That helps a lot, yeah. But I really like the book, and I, I think that they did a good job of, I mean, there's, there's an example of trying to cram everything all in one two hour movie, whereas with Band of Brothers, they had. You can make it a series, yeah, it's like three right episodes. Where they something. can tell that story mm -hmm. and, and, um, and introduce you know, a wide variety of characters too. Mm -hmm. And I think with Band of Brothers, they drew from other accounts. It wasn't just Ambrose's sure. book. Mm -hmm. uh, it was, you know, they drew from other. I think a lot of the, the soldiers had written their own accounts and, and they were able to do a lot of research and bring that in. And I, I saw the miniseries first and then I read the book. Mm -hmm. And um, I like the miniseries much better. Mm -hmm. um, and part of it is, um, I have a background in history, and Ambrose kind of mm. has a bad name among historians because he doesn't—he yeah. he didn't cite his sources very well, and mm. or quotes or ideas, and so that really kind of colors mm. my. Whenever you're reading anything. Whenever I read Ambrose, I'm always like, oh, well, dude. Talking about source <laughs> material, like, if I remember, it's been a while since I've seen the series, the HBO series. But if I remember right, the actual characters. They interviewed them at the beginning of they like, did. most of most of not all the episodes and they kind of described what they experienced. Mm -hmm. So I think that when they created the series they probably yeah. took from them as source material too, mm -hmm. which probably made it more accurate. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, the mini series is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I love it. It's great. Mm -hmm. Next. Oh, interview with a vampire. This is one of mine. Um Interview with the Vampire, this is the original, the first edition of the book, which um, I read when I was in middle school or high school. I don't know. Another one from my mom she had, and I read it. Um, and then it's one of those, and I, I have this happen a lot in the movie. They announced we're going to do the movie, and I just went, you know, fangirl crazy. Oh, what is the movie of a book that I love to death? And then they mentioned Tom Cruise, and my heart sunk. 
like, how? What? No. I'm crazy people. And then, I, but I'm open minded enough to say, I'll, I'll try it. I'll, I mean, I'm, 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 I don't think I've ever not completely watched something just because I thought, are they crazy? Because you know what? Somebody must, it's, it's worked before with other things, other TV shows or movies or things. You don't think this actor can do it, and they just are completely transformed either by their own acting or the direction or director or whatever it makes it work. And so I said, eh, let's go and went to see it. And it was awesome to me. They, every, my, it was like they went in my head and took what I had pictured and put it on the screen. And I mean, it was just one of my favorites ever. And I was just, so this was one where like, and I wouldn't say the movie is better than the book. I said they are both great. And they, it, to me, it totally, <gasps> there it is. Holy crap, it's on the screen for me. Yay. Yeah. So, yeah, I had fear, fear, fear. And then it was just like, oh, they're right up there. The curly hair of, of <laughs> Claudia. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> It took me a second to wrap my head around Kristen Dunst as a tiny vampire. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. I remembered it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I remembered an interview. She complained that Brad Pitt had chap lips, like they were really dry. <laughs> <laughs> she was like 12 or 14 at the time. Right. So Brad Pitt's not a good kisser. I haven't thought about that. With him. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna. You're gonna right? Um, I that was an interview with vampire. Was one of the first. Uh, books on a CD I ever listened to huh? um, on, a, on a long car ride and it was um, great for a car ride it was mm -hmm. it was a great thing to listen to going mm -hmm. down the highway um, and I I could not picture Tom Cruise in that part either mm -hmm. and I had a hard time with him in the movie yeah I just had a hard time with him on screen mm -hmm. but I think a lot of times vampire movies I was thinking about Dracula Mm. And I mean, the, the the film versions of Dracula have absolutely zero to do yeah, with yeah. usually with what's in the book. But even mm. ones that try to be faithful, like that was uh, Francis Ford Coppola directed Bram Stoker's Dracula, and you can tell by the title that he was trying to make it more faithful to the book. Mm. But yeah. that one is honestly laugh out loud bad. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. It's been so bad. <laughs> <laughs> That is what I recommend. So Halloween coming up, watch that one. <laughs> it's funny. And it's it okay. might not want to be funny. <laughs> Unintentionally, he made a good movie. Not the one he was planning on making. <laughs> oh, right. Right. Um, priceless. Yeah. And this one, too, I was looking so forward to they started making more movies. And then we mentioned um, Queen of the Damned, and it was just like, oh, no. God. All right. Um, they are coming out with a, there is a TV series now being based off of this that Anne Rice and her son Christopher are involved in. They're developing right now. I'm very interested to see that because I don't think she was involved in this movie, but she was, she, she approved of it totally. She, she did say he did, I, she, you know, she did the same thing, a wait and see. And then after she said he did it, yes, he is my the stat, he's my, it's, it's all, it's what I was, yeah. So she approved of it. And now they're working on, um, what do you say? Let's see what happens with that. Are they going to take the stat to Atlantis? <laughs> <Do you know? laughs> well, they're starting with this, so. Okay. To come to the I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Trace Body, here's, uh, we got some more, uh, um, bonus. <laughs> what? <laughs> Facts? <laughs> I don't wait, so look at the movie. So I don't know which way. Uh, that's just another example of one that I thought the movie was better than. I haven't read the book, I've seen the movie. Uh, is the book written, did they use dialect? I, don't, I can't stand it when they use dialectic uh, dialogue. In the book, do they have the yeah, accents? Like, 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 well, like, 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 like when they spell it oddly. I don't remember. You know, it's been so long since I've read the book. I don't remember. It's been a long time since I've read the book. And so. you had, and you, I haven't read the book in a long time, too. So I like the movie. Yeah. <laughs> ah, see? That's the thing, dude. Yeah. Crushes is another one of those. Mm -hmm. Like, I saw the movie Crushes, and I didn't want to touch the book. And that's yeah. mostly because of that. I couldn't wrap my head around the, they wrote in slang. Yeah, mm -hmm. they do. And, I know that. Yeah. And you have to, if you're 
how do you, you do that? You have to concentrate. Oh, yeah. so. Blackbird horns would be another example. Of that. That's yeah. nice. So, yep. <laughs> the one that would, for me, at least would be hard to read, although I think Michael Sowers would be on that one just to read. But for me, yeah, it would be a hard book. Or Fight Club. Has anyone read Fight Club? I've read others. I've read Fight Club because I was living in uh, Portland at the time. And so I like the Portland most. Um, they're, they're different. I mean, he has such a, he has a unique style of writing that is enjoyable yeah. and easy to get into. But then, I, you know, Brad Pitt really makes that movie happen. Yeah. yeah. He really makes that story sing. So. Just once you know the plot twist in that, and there's like yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. Some movies are not rewatchable. Yeah. Because, uh, well, as rewatchable, I guess. And for me, that was, that was not a book that I had ever read, but I heard great things about the movie, so I watched the movie and I did not like it. Like, I, yeah. I didn't yeah. get the point of it. It's like, I, in fact, I don't even think I finished it. <laughs> that was, I, I, yeah. I, just, I was like, I, I don't understand this. Yeah, I had a hard time with the movie too. But, I know, yeah, I've never read the book, but maybe that's one to go back and if you have the time, read, read the book, read the book yeah. to as 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 they get more of the story. Something I missed something obviously, so let's figure it out. Yeah, maybe I think get into the character's heads more as, as to what's going on because I didn't get a visual. It's a very it's a crazy, yeah. <laughs> it's a crazy concept, everything about it. I was, I remember at the time being mad that it wasn't, it wasn't Portland enough. Uh, <laughs> it was in Portland enough when I was living there in the 90s. So yeah, oh, now we've got, um, I just want to let them know, it's about a little after 11, we started a little after 10. We're going to finish up with just the last few things we have here to talk about. So um, if you do need to leave, that's fine. We're recording the show and the whole archive of recordings will be ready for you um, to watch later. So here's one, Anna Green Gables. There have been a lot of adaptations of this. <laughs> the one I remember most is the one there in the middle. Um, and right now on Netflix is they've come out with Anne with an E. Has anyone seen the Netflix one? I've watched a few episodes. I haven't mm -hmm. finished it yet. But it's very dark. It really goes into That's like what I was reading. That it's, yeah. Yeah, it's not this. Yeah. She has a lot of flashbacks. She was very abused in other homes and, mm -hmm. and where she was. So she's often like going into these horrible past episodes mm -hmm. of what has happened to her. So mm -hmm. but it explains a lot about her personality and mm -hmm. how fantastical she is about her imagination. Now, the book isn't dark that way. No, no, no. I mean, no. That's something they created for. And that's, that's a, this is a Netflix thing. They yeah. take a lot of your fun it's things like um, Archie and whatnot and just go crazy off the deep end. <laughs> I don't know if this is not that far off the deep end, but um. <laughs> yeah, they really went along with Archie. Yeah. <laughs> like the first Andrew Green Gables had more of that whimsy to mm -hmm. it, and that's kind of what I liked about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was like pure imagination and it just kind of progressed through the, there were actually I think three movies? There were, there were sequels, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they kind of combined a lot of the books, Anne of Avonlea, Anne of Green Gables, yeah. Anne of the Islands. Yeah, and that must be what this is, the bottom of that one I see it does say five disc collector's edition. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to screenshot of something like that. Yeah. And Anne of Avonlea is probably more of an inspired line in my mind. Mm -hmm. And not really capturing like Montgomery's you know, whimsy. It, yeah, it's far more realistic about it what an orphan would have gone through at that mm -hmm. time. And I think if, that, if the book had been like that, no one would have read it. Because no one wants to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> not back when it was written and not no. you know, young adults who were wanting some fun and yeah. And then we also have little women. Which has been, and we were talking about this earlier, remade a ton of times and is going to be remade again past the ones that I have <laughs> here. Um, I read Little Women on once again when I was a teenager, loved it, it was awesome. Um, the Winona Rider, that Little Woman there, that was, the, I think, pretty faithful. I don't know. Yeah. Of it. It, it didn't bother me at all. I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, it was yeah. fun. Nothing too 
earth shatteringly different. They pretty much just told the story. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there have been some other adaptations that I remember too that we were looking at. The um, Catherine Hepburn as Joe. I remember that yeah. one. Seeing was it Natalie Wood in one? Is that the same? She played. Oh, was she in one? I don't know. We, we were looking it up and they're trying to find because then there's also one that has. Um, I mean, Lee and Lee and Lee June and Allison. Allison. It, I mean, there's just so many of them, yeah. And those older ones too, I think, are pretty faithful. Oh, yeah. And then we have this one coming out this month, where they have brought it to modern times. I'm um, interested because Kurt Gerwig is directing. Mm -hmm. So, um, so what do we think about that when they do? This is something that's been a little with many books they've brought. They've like updated it to being modern. I mean, we talk about things like. Clueless, which are taking something yeah. that you don't realize was a something other, you know, a book, and making it something so new and different that unless you knew and you could match it up with that, this one, they're blatantly saying this is Little Women, but it's. I I think it's you know some of these stories are so no. timeless, you know, their experiences, regardless mm -hmm. of when the story is set, that mm -hmm. we all have. So. There's also the one called Sense and Sensibility, but it's like S C E M T S, and she's like going into perfume sales. Ah, and I was like, that was that was actually pretty good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a good hated it. That's an interesting twist on it. Yeah. yeah. Huh. But the the general themes of the story were still there. They mm -hmm. just kind of updated it quite a bit. Yeah. This is going to need to be need to have a lot of updating because I mean a lot of the things in Little Women had to do with because of when it takes place, the original, certain things women cannot do, are not allowed to be involved in, and how they had to fight for it or do it surreptitiously or whatever. They're gonna, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of interested yeah, to see how are they going to have those same kind of struggles, but now it's not an issue. Certain things yeah. are not an issue. So, and I like, you know, some of the actresses in this too, and, and yeah. This is one of those. I have movies that I'll go to the theater to see because I'm so much into it. And some I can go to this one once on TV. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm um, in somewhere. Yeah. All right. Anybody out there have any? Nobody's commented on anything about what we've been talking about here. Anybody have anything they want to say about any <clears> of <throat> the titles we talked about or anything you want to mention? Um, we do have some. Um, just check in your questions section. Let us know. Um, so, any other books you want to? Um, talk about that. We kind of throw the hour here pretty well. Um, here at the Library Commission, this is something that Amy mentioned, Linda mentioned, I don't know. Um, we have um, book club kits here that we check out to libraries across the state. And, um, well, they're, they're kind of self explanatory. You get a set of books, multiple titles that you can have and read together. Uh, you can also, we do have some of these kits that do include um, the movie. So, um, yeah, so if you just check that little box, yeah, there's a little box over here that says movie DVD. Yeah, and if you check that, it'll show you, um, mm -hmm. and then hit that and then hit search, and it'll um, show you all the ones that we have DVDs of, but we also have a lot of books in the collection that have movie versions that we don't happen to have the DVDs of. Um, mm -hmm. With October coming up, I don't know if you can guess, but I like Halloween a lot. <laughs> yeah. But um, we have uh, Frankenstein, which is a fantastic novel. Um, and you could have a lot of fun reading that as a group and then watching any number of versions of Frankenstein and see how they're nothing like the book. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Frankenstein inspired um, Netflix show that came out. Um, I forget what it's called. I forget I mentioned it. It's a showtime. And I think both. I mean, Frankenstein is everywhere. Uh, Frankenstein is everywhere. The one I'm thinking of is Netflix, though. Um, yeah, first uh, science fiction novel written by a teenage woman. It's pretty fantastic. Let me see if I can The Frankenstein Chronicles? Yeah, that was the one. Okay. It even had Frankenstein in the name. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes, Sean Bean. Yes. yes. Yeah, I remember that. Yes. Um, 
Oh, someone did mention um, Aragon. <coughs> the Aragon books, the Aragon dragon. Oh, um, <coughs> Dave Mixer says the movie destroyed everything. <laughs> <laughs> Strong opinion here. Don't ever do that to my movie again. <laughs> There's other issues with that. <laughs> we don't need to even go. I took a I took a fun series one time when it came out with train. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And and my, my kids rented it too. And because my kids and the friend I took had never read the book, they really enjoyed the movie. Mm -hmm. And it's visually stunning, but it, man, it leaves a lot out. People yeah. are saying that they were so excited about it because reading it as a child. Or yeah, a right, that's why you have a real emotional connection with the friend that you And then it apparently didn't do so well. It really didn't. Mm -hmm. it's be so but as its own, yeah, it's. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, if you haven't read the book, you'll love the movie. Mm -hmm. Or if you can disconnect disconnect yourself enough and say, no, I yeah. need to just enjoy it for what it is, which is difficult when you have that kind of connection. Yeah, but even even the friend that I spoke when she was eleven, uh, we had to explain a lot of things after that. She's like, why why did that happen? Because I don't think it mean, just wasn't long enough to be able yeah. to get the whole plot across. You wonder why things happen. So. Yeah. Oh, we didn't talk about the animated stuff. Nope. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a, that's a full show on its own. That, yeah, I know yeah. we have we have another material here. To do. <laughs> Yes, yeah. we'll probably be doing this again in a year. Uh, someone else says, Lonesome Dove movies um, benefited the books, um, Dave, as well. That, um, yeah. Um, so here for our book club kids, this is the Library Commission's website and also the Nebraska.gov. And if you click on there, you get our, um, this will link, yeah. So now, could, can we just search this to just give everything that includes the DVD? Yeah, or? just, yeah, okay. 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 So you just ring your search. button for that. Yeah, and hit search. And, and, then, and, yeah. and then everything that comes up says with DVD available, and you'll see it tells you here for because of Dixie, there's 15 copies of the book, also one video DVD copy. So, yeah, um, I think it's yeah, so yeah, if you scroll down, you'll mm -hmm. see. Do anyone know Sky? I was just thinking about October. And we can search for it, but um, this, this is, <laughs> that, um, so if this is something you wanted to do um, for in your own book club, as Amy described, she said you could um, get the book club, um, read the book, watch the film, and um, argue, fight amongst yourselves about it in your book club. <laughs> Have it one of your book club meetings be, is the book better than the movie? We're going to all watch the movie and find out, or say what we think. <laughs> So one other thing I have on the slides too is um, a website that I was uh, led to, and we've also said that New York Times is doing this as well. Yeah, where you can sign um, up for like, and you can go in and search the website, but part of it mm -hmm. is like they encourage you to sign up for like weekly or bi-weekly updates of like different movies that are available for streaming on various services. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it is stuff that you might not have ever heard of. And, mm -hmm. um, and it tells you like what service it's available from. Mm -hmm. And that's what this one is here, is a justwatch.com. Um, it's, uh, it, it's not a place to get like pirated movies of these or where can I watch this for free without having to pay. The idea is you look up the title you want to watch and then it will tell you where it is available, where it's going to be available, is it available, you know, if you have a Netflix subscription, if it's to rent from Amazon Prime or whatever. Um, you can do this. Also, though, we should you know, borrow from your library, too. Well, you're just, this is our book club kits that we were showing you. Go check your local library and see if they have the movie you want um, that you can then compare to. Um, right. Lots of things are on the streaming and lots aren't. There's, and your, yeah. your local library might have Coupla mm -hmm. and Coupla uh, is a streaming service. Right. And they may have some of the older versions of these, like the Little Women, like there's one in the 1930s that kept happening around in the 1940s. That's the kind of thing you're not probably going to find yeah. on the streaming. You're yeah. going to need to, if you want to go and look at those. All right, so any other last minute words of wisdom or questions from the um, audience? As you see, we've been talking about a lot more titles here. Oh, we should have mentioned this. This will probably come up again. We, may have, we have um, a large group of people here that do our Friday reads, as I mentioned. Um, so maybe we'll have some other people that would want to uh, talk about what they think about books and their movies. So maybe we'll have some other people. Thank you.
All right. So I'm going to pop back to the website. And we're going to get our Encompass Live web page up. Now, the Encompass Live so far is the only thing on the internet called this. Yay. Um, so if you just Google us or search us with your search engine of choice, you will find us in our archives. Our um, recordings go here. These are upcoming shows, but our recordings go right here underneath. And the most recent ones are the top of the list. So today's will be there probably by the end of the day today. Um, on everything processed. We will have, um, this is last week's, we had recording and presentations about the Great American Read, which many of you still have there, by the way. Interested in voting for your favorites there. Um, the slideshow and the recording will be available on there. So I'll post both of those so you can see some of the um, books that we talk about. Now, as you know, as you're here, we did not have slides for every book we discussed, but that was just, you know, a get us started kind of thing. But that will be there. Everyone who attended here live today and registered for today's show will get an email from me letting you know when the archive is available and ready for you to go and watch. So, um, for the other day today. So, I hope you join us next week when our actually our next two um, Encompass Lives are about grants. We are offering grants now um, again at the Library Commission next week. Get a youth grant for excellence. Sally Snyder, our coordinator of our children and young adult library services, will be here talking about our youth grants for excellence that are available. Right now, the grant is open and the deadline is October 15th. So, come join us next week to learn more about that. And then, right after that, we are doing continuing education and training and intern ship grants a year. Um, we haven't done CE grants in a while, but we're bringing them back, and we will have internship as well. So I will be here, and um, Holly Duggan, our CE coordinator, talking about those. We are working on getting those pages updated with dates and information, so look for that coming soon. Um, but we have a deadline to show about it in two weeks. But we're working on it as we speak. I believe the idea is um, Internship grant deadline is going to be in November or something this year, and CE deadline will be December. Dates to be determined, but that's what we're working on right now. Each grant one month after the other, so not all on top of each other. So definitely sign up for those. Sign up for any of our other shows we have coming up. Encompass Live is also on Facebook. If you are a big Facebook user, give us a like over there. Slowly. And um, you'll be notified when we have new um, shows coming up. Here's a reminder to log in for today's show, when our recordings are ready. Um, I post on here as well, so um, if you do like Facebook, like us over there and you'll get push notifications from there. Other than that, that wraps up today's show. Thank you everybody for being here today, squishing in the camera, we all fit. Worried <laughs> 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 about that. Um, and thank you everybody for attending. Um, look for the archives, sign up for more shows, and we'll see you next time on End of This Live. Bye! -bye.